G'day everyone, Dominic here again from Game Boy Productions and today I'm going to run you through this Wolverine Claw effect. To start, use a marker to mark out some points on your fist. I recommend about 3 dots per finger. This will help us track the claws to our hand. When filming, keep your fingers as still as possible. Too much wriggling will make this effect a lot more difficult. Instead, I opt to keep my fingers as tightly connected as possible and using only small rotational fist movements. Since I'm filming on an overcast day, I'm using this large mirror to bounce back some of that ambient light. For the shot that I want, I need to get a very low angle, but my tripod is quite tall, so I have to stand on a chair. This is what my initial shot looked like. As you can see, I have the markers on my fingers, and I also have that nice overcast sky in the background, giving it a nice moody composition. Once you are happy with your recording, you can then drag and drop your footage inside an After Effects document. Since I begin this shot with my fingers uncurled, I'm going to find the time when my fingers lock into that final fist position. As I had mentioned at the start of this video, you need to keep your fingers as still as possible for this effect to work its best. I'm going to use Ctrl Shift D to split this clip. The next thing that I want to do is export just this portion of my recording. To do this, I can click and drag on these blue work area tabs on the timeline. Then I need to go File, Export via Adobe Media Encoder. I'm exporting this using the H.264 preset and saving it into a folder on my computer. Next, open up Blender. When Blender opens, choose VFX on the splash screen. Here, we need to open up the file that we just saved from Adobe Media Encoder. Okay, so this is where we're going to track our footage. Come to the Track tab and choose Objects and then click on this plus button. We're going to track the object. On the left hand side of your screen, you'll see some marker settings. The pattern size will be the size of our markers, and I'd recommend making the search size value just a bit larger than this. For each of the tracking markers, click the add button, and then click on the dot. With all my markers placed, I press A on my keyboard, followed by the letter E, and then I click track markers. This will track through the footage. After I've done this, I can click the set scene frames button, this will align the number of frames in Blender to the number of frames in my clip. I then click on the Solve tab, and then click Solve Object Motion. I'll then click on Geometry, and click 3D Markers to Mesh. You'll see this appear in the Document Viewer on the top right hand side of your screen. Now, I'm going to click on this plus button at the top of the screen. General, and then Layout. This is now the workspace that we'll be using for this effect. As you can see, the 3D markers are floating in 3D space. I'm going to quickly go back into my VFX tab, scroll down and click set as background. Your footage will now appear if you look through your camera by clicking on the camera icon. Before we get started, I'm going to click on the camera on the top right hand side of my screen and then add an object constraint camera solver. Once that's done, I'm then going to click on the track object on the top right hand side of my screen and then add another object constraint, but this time an object solver. Under object, I choose object camera, choose camera, and then click set inverse. Now, if I play through my footage, my dots will fall along with the footage in the background. I'm now going to import my Wolverine claws. I'm going to go file, import, and then choose FBX. From here, you can import my Wolverine claws that you can download in the description as well. I'll just delete these two outside claws by clicking on them and then pressing delete. Next, what we need to do is align the claw with these 3D markers that are floating in 3D space. I can use the movement tool to align the claw on the X, Y, and Z axis. Obviously this might take a bit of time, it might be a bit finicky, but the more time you spend here, the better the result will look. I'm pretty happy with this positioning, so now I can click on the camera icon again, and then do some further alignments. I'll then press the S key on my keyboard, and then press X, Y, or Z. This will allow me to scale my object on the X, Y, or Z axis. If you have any trouble with this step, perhaps try changing from global to local transform orientation at the top of your screen. Using the movement tool, click and drag on the circle to align your claw to your fist. Then, click on the rotation tool, and then rotate your claw into the position that you'd like it to be in your footage. This is what my final position looked like. At the bottom, make sure you turn auto keyframing on. Just to see how this is looking, I'm going to click on the track object and then control click on the Wolverine claw. 
I'll then press Ctrl P on my keyboard and then choose Object. If this is done correctly, the Wolverine claws should be moving along with the fist in the footage. If the claw's movements look a bit strange, or it looks like the claw is sliding across the hand as it rotates, you might want to go back and adjust its position. If you need to do so, press Ctrl Z to go back. Reposition the claw and then perform the parenting step one more time. That way you can check if your claw looks better than before. Since mine looked good, I'm going to press Ctrl Z to undo the parent. I will then click on the claw and then press Ctrl C on my keyboard and then Ctrl V. I'll then use the move tool to move the second claw into its position. I'll then use the rotate tool to again position that claw the way I'd like it to be in the footage. Again, copy the claw and then move it into its final third position. We're going to repeat the parenting process, but this time using all three claws. Now we have all three claws tracked to our footage. At this point, we can still scale our claws if we need to. I don't want my claws to leave the frame of the footage, so just like before, I just press S on my keyboard and then adjust accordingly. The next portion of this effect is adding that popping claw effect coming out of the fist. To do this, since my claws are already in line, I can go up to the top and add a cube mesh. Here, I need to rotate my cube to align with the edges of my blades. I can use the movement tool, as well as the rotational tool, just to align it perfectly alongside that edge of those blades. You'll also need to scale this cube to be as long as the blades themselves. Basically, what we're going to tell Blender to do is to hide the blades when they go inside this cube. Before we begin, click on the cube and go to the Object Properties tab. Next, go to the Viewport Display Settings and change the Display As option to Wire. Now you'll just see the cube as a wireframe. Next, click on the first claw and then go to the Modifier tab and choose Boolean. You'll then need to select the cube as the object under this modifier. Repeat this step for the next two claws. After this is done, you'll need to parent the cube to the tracks. To ensure that this is done correctly, make sure that the tracks object is highlighted with a lighter blue shade. Again, press Ctrl P and parent to object. Then you'll see the cube move alongside with the claws. Go to the timeline at the bottom of your screen. Move forward about 10 frames and then set positional keyframes for all of these blades where they are currently sitting. I set a keyframe for all of these values just for peace of mind. Once that is done, Click on your first blade, and then move back to the first frame of your video. For this step, make sure you turn on Local Transformation Orientations at the top of your screen. Now, using the Move tool, all you have to do is slide that blade into the cube. As it goes inside the cube, it can no longer be seen. But if I go back into my camera view and press play, you'll see the effect that this creates. It looks like the blade comes in and out of the hand. As I have automatic keyframes turned on, I'm able to scrub through my footage and make any small positional adjustments needed to the claw. Now, all you have to do is repeat these steps for the other two blades. Once that's all done, you'll have your blades looking like they're extending from your fist. I'm now going to swap into the rendered view and turn off these two overlay settings. In the objects panel, drop down the Wolverine claws and then find the material options. The material has a red circle next to it. In the viewport shading options, I'm going to untick Scene World. If I click on these spheres, you'll see that the claws take on the colours of these environments. But I'll come back to that in a sec. Let's start editing our material to our liking. First, click on the material and open up the material properties. From here, all you'll have to do is adjust the roughness. The lower the roughness value, the more shiny and reflective the blade will be. You'll then need to repeat this step for the next two blades. Next, we can choose one of these spheres that best matches the colours of our initial video. There are ways you can use your own environmental images for this, however, I've just chosen to go with this preset as it matches my footage quite nicely. In the Output Properties tab, choose a file location to save your PNG sequence. It's probably best if you make a new folder for this. Now, under the Render Properties tab, select Film and then turn on Transparent. Next, I will click View and then Viewport Render Animation. Once my render is complete, I can then open up my After Effects window once again and import my PNG sequence. Locate the folder and make sure PNG sequence is enabled at the bottom of your screen. Next, drag and drop this PNG sequence on top of your timeline. 
you might notice that your PNG sequence doesn't quite line up with your original footage. This is because After Effects is interpreting the footage as 30 frames per second instead of 24 like my original footage. To change this, I'll right click my sequence and go interpret footage and then main. From here I can manually input my frames per second. Now my PNG sequence will line up perfectly with my footage. With my sequence selected, I'm going to apply a pixel motion blur effect. As the blades extend quite quickly, this adds a realistic motion blur. I will also add a fast box blur to the sequence. This will just take away some of the sharpness. For the blur radius value, I set this at 0.4. However, you'll need to adjust this to match your footage. Next, I'm going to add a noise and grain add grain effect. The goal here is to try and match the graininess of your footage. In my case, I felt that 0.4 intensity worked out the best. Under the color settings, I turned up saturation all the way to 2. After these effects have been applied, I'm going to add a drop shadow layer style. Under the drop shadow settings, I'm going to alter some things to make it look like the shadow is put on the hand itself. After some tweaking, the angle was negative 37 and the distance was 18, but you'll have to experiment for your own values. I also changed the opacity to 63% and then changed the colour to a dark red. This is to create that hole in the hand look. Once that is all done, I'm going to right click on my sequence and go pre-compose. From here I need to make sure move all attributes into the new composition is selected. I'm then going to duplicate this composition. With the top pre-comp selected, I'm going to apply a brightness and contrast effect. From here, I'm going to turn this all the way down. This will leave the blades quite dark, but I'm going to use the pen tool to draw a circle around the base of the blades. What I'm trying to replicate here is the shadow of my body on top of the blades themselves. I'm then going to turn up the mask feather, just to make this mask a bit more softer. If you're up to this step, but you want to change the materials of your blades, you can always go back into Blender and re-export your animation. Inside After Effects, all you have to do is right click your footage in the composition panel and go reload footage. This will automatically reload your blades into this document. Okay, so everything's coming together quite well. However, we still have one last hurdle to overcome and that's removing the tracking markers from the actor's hand. Since I'm gearing this tutorial for low budget filmmakers, I'm going to show you how you can do this inside After Effects without the use of paid plugins. To do this, I'm just going to restore the original footage back into one layer, as well as delete the original split portion. Next, I'll go to Effects and choose Mocha AE. You'll have to click the big logo to begin. Once Mocha opens, go back to the beginning frame. Use the magnifying glass to zoom into your footage, and then use the pen tool to circle around one of the dots. Once this is done, you can click the track forward button, and this will track the dot throughout your footage. If your tracker slides a little bit, you can set manual keyframes. Now my tracking is done, I'm going to click on this square button. You'll then see a square appear over your tracker. You can adjust these corners just so it fits more directly over that tracking dot. Next, click the save icon, and then you can close that window. On the timeline, right click and create a new black solid. I'm going to name this finger1.1. If we go back to our footage layer, we can tell Mocha to export this tracking data onto this solid layer. We can choose corner pin and then apply export. If I turn this solid back on, you'll see that it's tracked to the footage. Next, I need to pre-compose this solid. I'm going to rename this composition to finger1.1 erase and make sure leave all attributes is turned on. Double clicking on this composition will reveal the black solid inside of it. I'm just going to go back into the main comp and then turn off that black solid pre-comp. I'm then going to use the brush tool and then using the eyedropper, I'm able to select an area around the marker itself and pick out that specific colour. If I go back into that pre-comped black solid layer, I can then paint over the top of that black solid. You will need to double click on this layer first before you're able to paint. So, as you can see here, I'm just going to paint the entire black solid that particular colour that I picked out from my footage. If I go back into my main comp, and then re-enable my pre-comp, 
you'll see that this black solid has now turned into that fleshy skin color. I'm then going to apply a Gaussian blur and turn this value up quite high. This will blur out the edges and make it so that it blends over the top of that tracking marker. To make this even cleaner, turn off repeat edge pixels. I am then going to apply a brightness contrast effect over the top of all of this. Once I enable the stopwatches, I can scrub through my footage, adjusting the brightness and contrast of this area as need be. Repeat this for all other markers. This might take a while, but the more effort and time that you put in, the better the result will look. To speed up this process, you could perhaps duplicate one of these pre-comps and then drag it over the top of the next marker. You'll just have to set some keyframes throughout the timeline to make sure it follows the marker correctly. Once this is all done, I'm going to select all of these pre-comped layers, right click and then pre-compose them once more. Make sure Move All Attributes is turned on. On this newly created pre-comp, I'm going to apply a Add Grain effect. I'm going to set the intensity to 0.3, adding some texture back into those smoothed, blurred areas. This will help match it to the footage and the fingers around it. And there you go, you've created yourself a very cool looking Wolverine Claw effect. If you enjoyed this tutorial, check out our channel, leave a like and subscribe and I hope to see you in the next one.